بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه We're in lesson one of our new series on Islamic Studies 101. So inshallah we're starting off with some of the review and some of the basics, some things we've covered. And that is the six articles of faith. These are called Arkan al-Iman. Arkan al-Iman means those six things that all Muslims must believe in. They're mentioned throughout the Quran and throughout the traditions or sayings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these are things that every Muslim must believe in. Okay? And these six you're going to memorize. And for next week, inshallah, I'm going to test you on what those six are. If you know them, just keep to yourself, but we're going to go through them. And those are a formula we say in Arabic, but I'll go to the English first, and I'll give you the Arabic at the end. Okay? And that is that every Muslim says we believe in Allah. Okay? Aman to Billah. We believe in Allah. And we believe Allah is not male nor female nor a man, woman. He's not anything like a human being. Allah has always existed unlike human beings. Allah created human beings, but He Himself never ever had a beginning. Okay? That's what we say about that God, Allah is Allah because He has no beginning. Everything other than Allah, someone made them. That's Allah. So Allah made angels. Allah made human beings. Allah made trees. Allah made the planet. Allah made the universe. But no one ever made Allah. Allah always existed. He has no beginning. Okay? So we believe in this great Lord. And Allah, we mentioned in many lessons before, He's all powerful. He can see everything. He can hear everything. He knows your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're going to think tomorrow. He knows what you're going to think next year. He knows what you're going to do. He knows your wants, your desires, your thoughts. He knows when you want to do something bad. He knows when you want to do something good. And He's absolutely aware of everything. Allah has knowledge of everything. And Allah has power over everything. There's nothing that Allah cannot do. Allah can do everything and with ease. Nothing is hard for Allah. Whenever Allah wants a thing, He just wants it and it happens. Okay, So we cannot understand where that power comes from. But that is Allah. That's how powerful and great He is. Okay, So we believe in Allah. And then the second thing is, وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ And we believe in the angels of Allah. There are many, many angels. No one knows the true number of angels except Allah. Okay, No one knows exactly how many number of angels there are. There are perhaps billions, trillions, zillions, no one but Allah knows, okay? Uh, in these angels, there are some that are the major angels, the major ones that all Muslims must believe in, ones mentioned by name in the Quran, okay? The first of these is a great angel by the name of Jibreel, okay? Some say Jibra'il, both are correct ways. Jibreel, alayhi salam. And whenever we say the name of an angel, we say alayhi salam, upon him be peace. Although we say him, angels are not male, female either. They're made out of some type of nur, a light. They're not male, they're not female. Okay, but each angel has their own job. Each angel has their own job. The job of Jibreel is to bring revelation, messages from God to the prophets of God. The first of them being Adam, and then Moses, and Noah, and Abraham, and all those other great prophets. Who we say in the Arabic language as Musa, Isa, Ibrahim, Yusuf, all these different prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a question? Yeah. Um, were angels ever people? No, angels were never ever people. Angels were always created angels and will remain angels. However, an angel can take the form of a human being. He can transform and take the form of a human being, but he's not a human being. You will be able to see it, but he himself is not a human being. He's an angel, but they have the power or ability to take the form of a human being. That's right. Yes, in that case, that's why they took the form of a human being, so humans could see them and talk to them. For example, Jibreel used to take the form of a human being to talk to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and to bring him revelation. Okay? We'll take the questions later. Okay? So remember, 
angels, they're always angels, but they can take the form of a human being, okay, in order to teach. Because normally no angel comes in the normal form of an angel to talk to humans. Jibreel used to take the form of a human being, okay? Now, so Jibreel, he brought down the Quran. Jibreel brought down different revelations to the different prophets. And he's the most honored of all the angels, okay? Another great angel of Allah is Israel or the Malik al-Maut, the angel of death. That angel is in charge when every human being dies. He takes their soul out of their body and wraps it up and takes it to the skies that it has a place where it will take account and see the reality of the next life and then be returned back to the body after it passes away. So that's an angel called the angel of death. He takes the souls of human beings. That's why they die. If the angel of death doesn't take their soul, they cannot die. Okay? So the angel of death or Malik al-Maut, Israel, his only purpose is that he takes the souls of created beings. Okay? The third one is Israfil. Israfil is the angel that blows the trumpet in the end of time. He's a special angel that will blow the trumpet and that trumpet will signify or, or will make the last moments of existence come about. So in other words, when the angel blows the trumpet, all things will stop existing. Everything will be destroyed. And then there's another trumpet that he blows that starts the Day of Judgment. The second trumpet, when it is blown, everybody will find themselves resurrected. Okay? okay. So that's Israfi. And then the fourth angel that Muslims should know is called Mikael. Mikael. He's a great angel and he's in charge of bringing water from the skies, making the vegetation grow, and bringing about food or rizq provisions for humanity or for the different creatures. So these are four angels every Muslim should know. And there are other angels that we won't mention, but ones that record your deeds. There's one on the right that records your good deeds, one on the left that records your bad deeds. There are angels in front of you and behind you that protect you from anything bad that can happen to you. And then there are angels who uh, control the skies and the heavens to make sure no one can go from one heaven to the other without permission. And then there are angels that uh, are around the great throne of God. They praise Allah. They are huge. They are very, very big angels. They are called the Hamlet al-Arsh, those that hold the great throne of God. So we don't know what those angels look like. But they are eight of them, and they are gigantic, beyond imagination. Okay? And there are many, many other angels, many, many other angels. Every single day, 70,000 angels leave the earth to go to the heavens. And there they'll make tawaf around this other Kaaba that's in the heavens. There's another Kaaba in the heaven that's like the Kaaba of the earth. That Kaaba is for the angels. It's called Bayt al-Ma'mur, right? This great Kaaba in the heavens, that's where the angels go around to make tawaf every single day. So after the angels, there's four books that every Muslim believes in, these four books are sent to different prophets of Allah. Remember we mentioned this in the past. The first of these is the Tawrat, the Torah. The Tawrat was given to Musa. These you need to connect and memorize. The Tawrat was given to Musa. The Zabur, another book, was given to Dawood salam. And then the Injil was given to Isa salam. And then the final book, the Qur'an was given to the Prophet Muhammad That is our Prophet. That's the book that we have today that we have to live by. We live by the Qur'an. We believe in the Qur'an. The Qur'an that was given to the Prophet Muhammad is the only book today that is not changed or lost and will remain as authority on earth as the rules God wants us to live by until the Day of Judgment. No one can change the Qur'an. It has never been changed. It will never change. It will remain the way it is until the end of time. So we have belief in Allah, belief in the angels, and belief in the books. And the next thing is belief in the prophets. So we will continue on belief of the prophets shortly.